Hello friends, this video on evolution part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the various mechanisms of evolution, that is the various ways by which evolution take place. So let us see what are the various factors that can actually cause evolution to take place. So one such important factor is mutation. So we all know what is mutation, how it happens. Mutation is nothing but uh, when you talk about the molecular basis of inheritance, that how exactly inheritance happens, we go to its molecular level, we see that it is DNA which is responsible for carrying off traits from one generation to another generation. So now when a copy of DNA is being passed on from the parent to the offspring, what happens? DNA gets copied. Now during the copying of that DNA, there might be some mistakes and those mistakes give rise to mutations and those mutations give rise to new traits in the offspring. So these small, small changes can give rise to evolution. For example, if you look at uh, the example of the finches, so in the Darwin's finches, what, do, what did we see? That there were certain birds. Now initially when those birds came to the island, they were all belonging to the same species. They, they were all the same birds. But still some of them had longer beaks than others. So where, where did that difference of the longer beak come from? So that would have come from some mutation. There might be some change in the sequence of the DNA. So it was a small change, however, but that small change over a period of time, many such small changes altogether gave rise to evolution. So that is how mutation contributes to evolution. So mutation is nothing but change in DNA sequence. It can generate variation and these variations over a period of time cause evolution. So let us take an example. Evolution of a single green beetle which later give rise to more. So let us suppose this is a locality where we only have red beetles. So we do not have any other type of beetles. Now due to mutation, one green beetle is formed. So that is due to mutation. Maybe there was some change in the DNA sequence because of which the color of this beetle is not red but it is green. So just one beetle is formed as a result of mutation but then later what do we see? Over a period of time we see that since the green beetle also gets uh, the, some survival advantage and also because this green beetle, when it reproduces, there are chances that it will form more green beetles. So later that one green beetle can form many more green beetles. So that is how a small mutation led to evolution. Next mechanism is natural selection. This is what we were discussing so far. So there might be some trait which is giving some advantage for that organism to survive better in the environment. So the nature will support that change. So the same example can be used here. So here we saw that the green beetle was formed as a result of mutation. But after the green beetle was formed, it was observed that the green beetle is advantageous than the red beetle because it can protect itself from the predators. So it was found that there is a survival advantage involved there. There comes the concept of natural selection. So as a result of natural selection, the probability of formation of more and more green beetles increases. So this is where natural selection plays a role. So the change in frequency of some genes in a population which gives survival advantage. So basically it is due to natural selection that the genes which are responsible for uh, giving it the green color they got some advantage over the other genes and as a result more and more green beetles are being formed. So in natural selection you can also think of the example of the Darwin's finches where we saw that evolution of finches with larger beaks happened so earlier there, there were just one or few finches which had longer beaks. Most of them had shorter beaks and that is why they were happily eating seeds for that long. But when that scarcity was uh, felt, it was seen that there were quite a few of them who had larger beak. But over a period of time, there were the number of finches with larger beaks also increased because it also gave a survival advantage. So over a period of time, we found that the number of finches with larger beaks also drastically increased and that is how they could survive better because half of them could eat on, could feed on seeds and the rest of them could feed on worms. 
evolution of the green beetles again which I discussed just now. So these are some of the examples which tell us about natural selection and how it can cause evolution. The third mechanism is genetic drift. Now what is drift? Drift is nothing but a sudden uh, movement you can say. A sudden movement from or uh, a sudden change. So that is generally called drift. So let us see what is it. It is a change in frequency of some lucky genes in a population even though these do not give any survival advantage. So genetic drift is the concept is almost like natural selection but the difference is that natural selection happens for those traits which give some survival advantage but here it randomly happens for just any gene. So it is just a matter of chance. So it is not about a green color beetle which is going to uh, give a survival advantage. It can be just anything. By chance or by luck, some genes suddenly get some advantage and as a result their frequency suddenly starts changing. That is known as genetic drift. So let us try to use this, make use of the same example to understand the difference between genetic drift and natural selection. So this happens by chance. That is very important to remember when we talk about genetic drift. It doesn't happen under a particular condition or situation. It just happens on its own. So the evolution of the orange beetles. Let us suppose the same locality where you have all red beetles. Now due to some mutation by chance, an orange colored beetle is formed. So this orange colored beetle is formed due to mutation. Correct? So previously also we saw that a green colored beetle can be formed due to mutation. So due to some genetic change. So a green color was formed that time. But we saw that the green colored beetle had a survival advantage because it could protect itself from the predators. So it had a survival advantage. But here this orange colored beetle has no survival advantage because the way the red beetle is visible on green leaves in a similar way the orange beetle is also visible on the green leaf. So there is absolutely no survival advantage of the orange beetle. But sometimes what happens is just just by chance, the probability of getting more and more orange beetle increases and as a result, the population of the orange beetle increases. So this increase in the population of the orange beetle happens just by chance. Now you might say that why the red beetles vanished. So this is just to tell you, we, I am not focusing on the red beetles right now. So the red beetles will remain as it is. It, their population will decrease depending upon how much of them are being eaten by the predators. Now the orange beetles will also get uh, eaten up by the predators. But sometimes what happens is by chance, by reproduction, most of the beetles which are being produced or which are being formed, they are all orange in color. So as a result, what will happen? The number of orange beetles or the population of orange beetles will increase. So this is the concept of genetic drift where you do not have any survival advantage but just by chance some particular gene or some particular trait suddenly changes in its frequency. And finally, the last and the fourth mechanism of evolution is migration. As you all know, what does migration mean? It means movement of organisms from one place to another. Now, due to any reason, it might happen that a group of organisms move from one place to another. And when this type of movement happens, then also evolution takes place. For example, again, we can think of the Darwin's finches. So how the entire story of evolution of the Darwin's finches started from migration because a group of finches migrated from some other place to the Galapagos island by a storm. So that is how they migrated there. Now once they migrated there what happened they started to increase in number and there was scarcity of food. So as a result of it now if you look at the location of the Galapagos island earlier there were no finches there but suddenly finches evolved there. So how did the finches evolve there? By migration because they came there by migration and today you see 13 to 15 species of finches on the Galapagos island. So what is the cause of that evolution? which had happened in the, on that island. Migration is the basic cause. So here in this example also you can say that evolution of orange beetles. So in this example if you assume that these orange beetles they increased in number in this particular area and then they moved to some other location. So what happens in that other location suddenly the population of orange beetles increases. 
So that evolution happened as a result of the migration. So these are the four key factors or these are the four mechanisms by which evolution takes place. That is mutation, uh, natural selection, genetic drift and migration. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.